Hi, welcome to Market Board Videos. Today's video is about work. And I know that you know what work is. I know that when you've studied for a test or done a hard problem, you always say to me, wow, that was a lot of work. And you're right, it was um, in the regular sense of the word. But today we're going to talk about work in the scientific sense of the word. And scientifically, if you do work, it's um, exerting a force and on an object and moving that object through a distance. So if there's been no distance, there's been no work done. So when you've studied really, really hard for a test, yeah, that's a lot of brain power, but scientifically you haven't done any work. See, previously we talked about um, force and, uh, and, and time, force times time, and that gave you impulse. And when we said how long, we were talking about time. Well, this time when we say how long, we're really saying how far. So how far is a measurement of distance and in order to find work, you simply mathematically take your force and multiply it by your distance. And if the distance is zero, that makes your work zero as well. So, if you lift something, you're working against the gravitational pull of the Earth. And if you're working against the gravitational pull of the Earth and you lift something, you are doing work. Barbell. If you lift a barbell, you do work. But, if you simply hold it there above your head and hold it still, no work is being done on the barbell. And it's really important to specify on the barbell because within your body there is work going on. Your heart is contracting, which is a distance. It's forcing blood to course through your body. So yes, you're going to feel, feel tired and fatigued. But in terms of work on the barbell, none's been done because it hasn't moved at all. No distance, no work. Work is done to lift the barbell. Lift it twice as high, you've done twice as much work. Lift twice as much mass on the barbell, twice as much weight on the barbell, you've done twice the work. So, if you double F, you double work. If you double D, you double work. So there's a couple of different categories of work we're going to talk about briefly today. First, I call it category one. There's no magic one and two, but I just put them in categories to make things a little bit easier. First kind of category is work done against another force, like lifting the barbell. You're doing work against gravity. So let's do three, let's look at, at, at three examples. An archer. Archery is really big these days, probably based on the movie Brave, but when that archer pulls that bow back through a distance, you are working against the elastic force of the bow. The, that bow wants to, that string wants to go back, doesn't it? And you've got to pull it against that. So you're working against another force. When you do a push-up on the ground, there's my beautiful picture. It looks more like a dog than a person doing a push-up, but there you have it. When you do a push-up, you are actually doing work against your weight against your weight. Remember, weight is a force. Remember we did the whole difference between mass and weight? Okay, and weight is a force. So push-ups are working against your weight. And if you push a box like this, on this across the surface, you're, um, you're doing work against friction. The force that you're opposing is the frictional force if you get that box to move. Of course, I grew up in Chicago, so I know what it's like to try and push a car when it gets stuck. If that car doesn't move, no matter how hard you push, you've done no work. But if the car does move, then you have done work. Likewise, if you push a box and it doesn't move, no work. If it does move, you are doing work. And again, what you're going against is against friction. Second category is work done to change the speed of an object. If you're changing the speed of an object, either slowing things down or speeding things up, you're doing work. Uh, if you're speeding down the freeway and you hit the brakes to stop the car, the brakes are actually doing work on the car. If you're getting onto the freeway and you need to speed up and you press the accelerator, then you're speeding up and that is also work being done. So those are the two categories, work against another force and work done to change the speed. Now here's a really important part. Work involves the transfer of energy between something and between its surroundings. So there's got to be some kind of energy transfer. And I know we haven't talked much about energy. We will, believe me. But um, if you have work, you have energy transfer. And again, 
I wanted to remind you that impulse was force times time, whereas work is force times distance. And in the next video or so, we're going to put those things together. But for right now, I just want you to know that impulse is force times time. So what units do we use for this? Glad you asked. The units that we use, force is in newtons and distance is in meters. If you have those two things, force in newtons and distance in meters, then work, which is force times distance, becomes a newton times a meter. And a newton times a meter has a special name. It's called a joule, uppercase J, and it's spelled J-O-U-L-E. And it's at, named after a famous scientist. One joule is needed to lift one newton, one meter. So figure you have an apple, not a real light apple, but not a real heavy apple, and you lift it above your head, you've done about one joule of work, okay? K joule, KJ, K means kilo, kilojoules, 1,000 joules, MJ, mega joules, mega means a million, so it's a million joules. So joules are the way that we measure work in the scientific community. That's the unit we use.